Many of you may not realize it, I didn't know it, that there is such a thing as called the Stone Belt, and North Carolina leads uh, instances in the United States with regard to uh, kidney stones. Uh, Dr. Roberto uh, Ferrara joins me right now. He's a urologist with the urology specialists of the Carolinas. Thanks for joining us. Uh, the Stone Belt came up from, this is, this is first noted, I guess, in 1994? Yeah, that was the first big study that showed that uh, the southeastern part of the United States was the Stone Belt of America. Yeah, and, and by far are we leading in the United States, or is it close, or? Uh, by far, when, really? when you compare the Northwest to the Southeast, it's a fairly large spread. And, and now what we're finding is that women are catching up to men. It used to be mostly men, and now women are catching up, and especially in South Carolina. Right, it used to be three to one, now it's down to one and a half to one. In South Carolina, women lead the rest of the country in stones. What, uh, what's the contributing factor, I guess? Uh, it, it, regionalism such as food or what? It's multi, like most diseases, it's multifactorial. Uh, foods, our weather, uh, some genetics, yeah. and even infections can play a role in kidney stones. Our weather can play a part in that. Yeah, we have, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, go ahead, please. We have a thing I like to call relative dehydration here. Yeah. The warm weather, high humidity, a lot of sweating that goes on. Uh, relatively dehydrates your body and yeah. increased risk of stones. I, I've had a kidney stone. They hurt. <laughs> um, uh, and I, uh, to be honest with you, I never really get a good explanation as to what it is and what they are, I guess. Explain it, please. They're minerals yeah. uh, and they form in the kidney because, like we said, of a multiple of factors. If uh, two, a positive and a negative join together, they form a crystal and they get larger and larger. Is it mostly salt? A lot of them are, yes. Yeah. Uh, diseases like gout, uh, which a lot of men have around here, increase your risk of uh, stones as well. I didn't think people had gout anymore. That, I, I mean, you read about it in 19th century novels, but I didn't know it was coming back. Animal proteins, really? which are the cause of gout, um, and as our country gets more obese, gout goes up and stones go up directly with it. And I see here a lot of salty foods can, can lead to instances of... of uh, uh, the formation of these crystals, correct? Right. The, okay. the salt starts the little nidus and other uh, minerals can add on and enlarge it. Can we, uh, can we do anything to ward them off? I mean, let's say we're subject to them. Can we do anything to ward them off? We've looked at a lot of different things and uh, certain types of people, medications will help, but the things in general that improve uh, or lessen your stone risk are drinking more, yeah. about 70 to 80 ounces of water a day are great, uh, lessening animal fats and avoiding salts. Okay. And there's uh -huh. a few things that'll prohibit, like uh, citrates, fruit juices. Yeah. Let fresh squeezed lemon, orange juice are great for it. Really, they are. Mm -hmm. Okay. I know that I, I, I'm always accused that I don't drink enough water. Yeah, and that's uh, that's probably not very good. And that's the best thing you can do. Really? Mm -hmm. Okay, Dr. Ferrara, much uh, much interested in, in, in all this. I had no idea that that we were leading the nation in this, but hopefully we can uh, make a dent in it. Thanks for joining us. Much appreciate your time. Very welcome. That's our end of conversation for today. We'll be right back.